Shelly washed her hand that day Daniel falling on the gum speckled sidewalk after their first dinner together. He was talking about how he used to be into model rocketry when he was young, how he used to be such a nerd. She doesn't tell him that she has always wanted to be an astronaut. She is talking about, he is talking about how in high school he gave up rocketry for marathon running, but Shelly isn't listening. All she can think about is getting back to her computer game, getting back to her character in Universal Universe. She hears a few of Daniel's words like hot foot and bonk, and they slip into her mental catalog of spells she could be acquiring now if she weren't stuck in this mess of an uncomfortable thing. The war party she's joined has probably all moved on to bigger things already. You can't soar with the eagles if you stay up hooting with the owls. The old phrase just pops into her head, and her dad used to say it all the time, and the thought of him makes her tremble, which Daniel mistakes for a signal to snake his arm around her shoulders. For a split second, she worries he won't be able to reach all the way around, her shoulders are too broad, but then he does, and before she can begin to compute all the possible outcomes of this breach, he gives her a possessive squeeze and then lets go. He has better things to do with his arms like point at a man, straining and sweating in the window of a street-level gym. It is after 10 p.m. and this man is alone. Nobody else is in the gym, and he is gliding along a rowing machine's gleaming track with the silhouettes of weight machines receding behind him like medieval contraptions, and he is pouring his every will into the rower. Daniel is really excited by this, and he yanks Shelly's hand, pulling her with him, as he dashes up the sidewalk towards the glass. Shelly squirms. She lets herself be dragged along. The gym's lights make the man's sweaty skin glisten. His face is deep red behind a trim graying beard and small drops of sweat shake from the thin wires dangling from his blue lights. His eyes are hooded and he doesn't notice the man when Shelly is staring at him. Shelly feels like a snoop or a trespasser. Their proximity, even bisected by the thick window, feels transgressive, presumptuous. The man's tank top exposed his shoulders, swollen with effort, and every time he pulls back to stroke, his lips turn down in a snarl. This middle-aged man is giving everything, and they are witnesses to it. He is on a broad river, oaring down a lane, neck and neck with another boat. He is off in Oxford or Rome or wherever it is they row like this, and he's flying. He has left the earth behind and balled up his concerns, his obligations, his disappointments, and he has cast them into the furnace of his powerful body and is burning them up for fuel. Shelly fidgets. Daniel looks at her and grins, and she knows it means he's about to do something that will implicate them further, and she wants to go before the stranger sees them staring. She wants to sit at her computer and leave this weird date and dirty street and awkward gym, but here she is without a reset button about to be sucked into Daniel's scheme. She will never go out with Daniel again, and she promises herself that much. Daniel taps on the window. Shelly hears the taps as though they are rifle shots and is mortified. Before she can hit Daniel's hand away, the man's eyelids fling open, and he doesn't miss a beat on the rower as he stares right at Shelly now. The man's eyes are pink, wet, filled with the rage of imagined competition. Does he stroke harder now that he has an audience? Shelly thinks so. Daniel says, let's cheer for him. Shelly thinks, no, no. But Daniel starts lying and leaping up and clapping, speaking through the glass to the man. Come on, buddy, you're so close. You're almost there. Pull, pull, pull. Shelly takes a step backwards, about to turn and really run for it. But Daniel jerks his arm through hers and puts her back to his side. He cheers harder. He is a maniac, bouncing up and down on this nighttime sidewalk, shouting for a man on a rowing machine that he doesn't even know. And there's something charming about it. Shelly's mouth relaxes. She smiles in spite, of her, in spite of herself and then looks again at the man inside. He's really pulling now, his jaw locked in a grimace of glorious agony, and the drips of sweat are mostly airborne in the canine halo of shaking droplets. Shelly can't help it. She laughs. She balls her hands up into fists and pumps them in the air, laughing and watching the rower really dig in for the finish line sprint. She sees not the grimy carpet darkened by oil and still catering, but instead the shimmering river. The man is only half a boat length in front of this competition, and he is rowing for his life, for his country, for his family. He strokes harder and harder, and Shelly and Daniel are yelling, go, 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 and pounding on the glass. His eyes are about to burst from his boiling face. His knuckles look like raw bones, so white is his strained skin, and his legs are pumping in an unstoppable blur. He slices through the water, sending up a dolphin's wake. 
Shelley and Daniel's yells are ecstatic, and then the man hits the finish line, lets go of the oars, and slumps forward in his seat. His back heaves with exhausted breathing. He's trembling, and Shelley trembles too, watching him reach for that line in his head, seeing him flush his body, unfurl his broad courage to its full unruly stature, urged by their cheers from street-side bleachers, has flooded her with joyous beauty. For, for just a moment, all three of them were somewhere else together. She blinks. There are tears in her eyes and she's embarrassed. She can't let Daniel see that she cared about this. It would open her up to further flirtations. It would give him access to another layer of herself, another level, and that would be too dangerous. Abruptly, she turns and leaves the window. Daniel calls after her. He's at her side now, confused. He's upset that she has rejected this magical display that he's coaxed out of her perfect strength here. His pride wilts, and he pouts and pleads. Daniel, you don't want to get involved, not with me, not as you do. I'm a black hole. My walking, talking self is just a front, a character I play out here in the world. It's a wrapped up present with nothing inside, hopes. So don't get your hopes up. Better to leave me. Better to forget me. Better to never have known me. Shelley says, I have to go home now. She uses the scene between the sidewalks, cement panel, to guide her in a straight line. Want to get some ice cream? I need to get home. I have work to do. Work at 11 at night? Yeah. Yeah, it's demanding. Very personal. Very. Shelly just wants to be out of sight, safe in her bedroom, wrapped in a blanket with her blue slippers on, casting spells and earning points, safe at home, safe from strangers on rowing machines and strangers taking her to ice cream. Come to kiss her tonight. She has done all that before, 